Oh, oh buddy, the... your calf. Oh, man, that's just rude. For, for no reason in the calf, and then you're going to yeah, knife it's him. it's a waste of a round. Come on. Dude. Moving up to the breach, splitting the stack. This is good. See, ra Look, rounds yeah, start, start ripping. True. That's why you don't stand in front of the yeah, door. Standing there. Well, yeah, you like. got to be able to trust your equipment. So anything that you have on you, you've trained with that over and over and over again until it just feels automatic. It's just a muscle reflex at that point. Hey, my name's Cameron Fath. I was a former Army Ranger out of 2nd Ranger Battalion, and you can call me Nighthawk. Hey, my name is Israel Wright. I was a Special Forces Green Beret. I deployed to Iraq in 2008, and you can call me Dragon. All right, everybody, we're back. It's good to see you. It's good to be with you. We're doing a couple missions from Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Hide your kids, hide your wife, because we're getting into this. What a beautiful day to hunt. What a beautiful night, right? Because we mostly come at night, Absolutely. mostly. So we're doing a mechanical breaching. Oh, look, a Hooli oh, tool. Oh. So the actual equipment they're using is actually very accurate. Typically, in a squad, you'll carry mechanical breaching equipment, explosive breaching equipment, right. ballistic breaching equipment, like shotguns. Yep. These guys are ready to pretty much tackle any type of obstacle that they might face. Right. I mean, they've obviously gotten the intel. They know where the house is, mm -hmm. what it looks like, where the entrances and exits are. They're ready to go. Oh. Open window, ladder up, baby. A collapsible ladder, yeah, something mm -hmm. that you would definitely probably use. If yeah, you know. we definitely do use it. Typically, uh, you bring a couple ladders on you on an objective just so you can look over walls and find entrances such as what they're doing right now. Right. And it looks like they're doing a silent clear, so they don't want to be blowing the doors off this place, letting everybody know they're there. So it needs to be very slow, methodic, and they're trying to use stealth as their security. Okay, the nods, nods down, baby. Yeah. I love this. You learn to get really comfortable seeing only green. Yeah, swag heard. You're grabbing a gun. Yeah. Everybody in that room's a threat if there's a done. gun. Yeah. Okay, finish her up. <laughs> Just in case. I don't, yeah, hopefully okay. you get her the first time. Yeah. Ooh, good stack. I love it. Covering the corners as they're coming up. These guys have done this before. Even using suppressed weapons, when the rounds start firing, the jig's up. Like, you've just gone hard at that point. Oh, oh nice one, buddy. Oh, good job, Just make sure man. she doesn't go shoot her. Oh, no, you can't. That's yeah. not, one you're not allowed. Time. Not there allowed. Nice. Whoever's doing the gameplay for this is pretty on top of it. Yeah, this is slick. It's like you say, at this point, even if they have suppressors, I mean, everybody who knows you're there, you know? I love how they're staying methodical, though. They're staying nice and smooth. Yeah, they need to. There's a saying, uh, silence, violence, silence. You start out quiet, rounds start flying, you go really hard, really aggressive, really violent, and then when the pace slows, back to silence. Uh-oh. Whoa! That's not good. Now, wait a minute, he looked like he was just passing that doorway by, exactly. so you wouldn't do that, you know? Yeah, every doorway is a threat, even if it's closed or open. Typically, it's a technique called pying, is where you would have your gun up and you would just slowly come in front of it, chopping those angles like a pie slice. Yep. You'll be able to see the enemy before they see you using that method. And I mean, even a closed door, you should be squared up with it because if rounds start flying, I'd rather take rounds to the front of my plate than the side. We were always taught, you know, as long as you got two people, you can stack up. Absolutely. On the door, you know. Two to clear. Two to clear, that's right. So you see, stop. splitting the stack on the door, slowly going in. Whoa! Uh oh. 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 It's a baby. Oh, don't shoot the baby. Okay. Mm. You gotta secure though. Mm -hmm. Secure. Yeah. You'll have a team behind you if you're doing the clearance. Uh oh. See, this would be where you would. Oh. oh, he's got a gun under the bed. <laughs> And they could hide anywhere. I know that we trained where they have little cubby holes in the corner, maybe even grates up top, and you gotta learn to take note of all that stuff as you come into the room. Yeah, you're not just looking at corners, you're looking in red zones, typically yeah. we'd call them. So anything behind you doors. can't see, yeah, anything where you, ever, you can't see, that's a red zone. No, don't shoot. Don't shoot, please. Don't you do it. I don't see her looking it. at something. She wants to do it. She looking. keeps looking back. Yeah, no, Gun on the table. Up. Up. Done. Yeah. Look, in that situation, I probably would have done the same thing. Uh -oh. like she keeps looking, she's acting shady, she's backing up towards something, she's obviously moving towards something, and we see it was a detonator. She's a detonator. You know? Yeah, she can clack off that entire building. It's a very simple mathematical equation when it comes to that kind of stuff. One plus one. Yep. Can I just get all, like, giddy and kid-like for a second? Because that was one of the funnest things I ever did, was riding on the side of it, with your legs dangling out, and you got the nods on, flying mm -hmm. over the desert skies of Herzegstan. 
typically wouldn't stand right in front of the door just because like we saw from our previous pals yeah. rounds rip right through yeah angle yourself and surprised they didn't use any type of flashbang or initiative to kind of set the momentum right there typically you'd throw a nine banger or a one banger in there right at the breach just yeah. to kind of um, confuse things up Moving up to the breach, splitting the stack. This is good. See, ra Look, rounds start there. ripping. That's why you don't stand in front of the yeah, door. Standing there. Good eye. Good eye. Gosh, I could barely see that. You got to stress the importance of knowing how to operate your equipment quickly and efficiently because that's almost a, a fine motor skill, putting those nods up because they have the lock on. That's so right. You, need you to, practice. That's something you'd practice. Yeah, you, people uh, think that we're always training magazine changes. No, it's everything. Technical skills. Yeah, you like, got to be able to trust your equipment. So anything that you have on you, you've trained with that over and over and over again until it just feels automatic. It's just a muscle reflex at that point. I like the fine details of this game. I always need security everywhere. I love all the headshots. It's all head that's all we ever did was headshots folks knowledge of where you're at i mean you're in a third world country you know that the walls aren't you know whatever they're made out of made out of mud brick or whatever taking a shot like that that's pretty impressive you know? the only thing you have to be really cautious about when you're ripping rounds through walls especially if you've already established the foothold on that floor is just knowing where your teams are i mean you gotta know what who's on the other side you gotta know where your team's at you make sure that nobody would be on the other side of that wall anyway especially because it seems like these guys are moving backwards, turning a corner and then facing where they just came from. Yeah. You need to be very cautious. There's a lot of doors and stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. you would practice that going through a house together, knowing where everybody's at, you know, just that sixth sense of, I know if I'm here and I see you turn in there, I know you're over there, you know? And so if I turn back around, I gotta be cautious because you might, you might be in the doorway, you might be in the room. Frontline trace is super important, especially when you're moving with multiple teams in one building. It's pertinent to mission success because you need everybody to come home yeah all right here okay okay secure. looks like we're going into the ssc phase of an operation Kiddos, changing hearts and babies. minds yeah it's not all violence folks <laughs> How long has Captain Price been in the military? Dude, like, like 47 years. 47 years? <laughs> this dude's dust. He's been in every major conflict. Ever. Of every country. One of the most the dangerous men in the world. Yeah, never changes his, his mustache, his, his mutton chops. Yeah. Uh, my nods would be down at this yeah, point. Yeah, right. Nods yeah, you down. You can't see anything. Mm -mm. I always love the nighttime training. The, the quiet and you're out there in the woods and stuff. I played outside when I was a kid a lot, you know, yeah. so this is like playing outside for me. There we go. There we go. Well, it seems like everybody, when they grow up and join the military, they're still kids just doing what they dreamt about. <laughs> There's always soldier. a little something about that, playing soldier. I know, that's what I felt like. <laughs> just bigger, more dangerous toys. Right, yeah, yeah. There's this thing that happens when you get close to a light source at night, you know, your eyes adjust to the light source. So if you look around, you actually don't have a good depth of vision if you look away from the light out into the darkness. So we did training missions where we'd get really close to guys who were next to a fire. They couldn't see us even though we were getting pretty close because they were, there's that fire blindness, or that light blindness that you get at night. They're moving very quietly for being in full kit. So it's stepping on hay, you know. Yeah, stepping on Muffles hay. Muffles their footprints. Being have chem lights, bolt cutters on your back, clicking and clanking as you're taking your steps. <laughs> right. I understand this is a video game, and it's all fun and games. But come on! <laughs> yeah. Ooh, little rappelling. You ever do any uh, front down rappelling with your weapon drawn? Not with my weapon drawn. Look at that. You have to do rappelling in ranger school, and it was all a blur to me because I was just so tired and hungry I couldn't focus on <laughs> what the knots were or anything. Maybe so. you did, you just don't remember. Exactly. I would love to mountain climb and rappel again in my own environment. Right, not under the thumb of the yeah. military. They ruined it for where me. Where they tell you where to do and where to go and what to wear and what to eat. You don't realize how tired you are until after you're done with the mission. Cause this whole thing, that's a lot of stamina, moving slowly, moving methodically, taking in your surroundings, taking people out, you know, a constant focus for a good couple hours. And then at the end of it, man, you're just dog tired, man, because you've used all your senses and all your endurance and stamina. It's like going at 100% really slowly for like three hours. And that's why we train for that. That's why PT is such an important thing. Oh, yeah. That's why we're running four to five miles almost every single day, like lifting, rucking, swimming, 
Mm -hmm. This is all to prepare you for doing this because this this isn't easy, and that's why I consider the special operations community to be part of mm -hmm. the athletic world. Elite this, athletes, yeah. Elite athletes. I mean, per definition, I mean, they don't play a sport, but if you consider war a sport, I think we're one of the best. The, yeah. the ultimate uh, endurance sport. Oh, who we got here? Oh, oh buddy, the... your calf. Oh, man, that's just rude. For no reason in the calf, and then you're going to yeah, knife him? Yeah, it's a waste of a round. Come on, just you know, just take him out of his misery. Just go for the knife in the neck. I maybe. want him to suffer. <laughs> there you go. See, that's polite. What's very interesting is every time he engages, he'll cant his weapon to get the laser. Right. But the laser's coming the laser out, out already, so we wouldn't have to do any of that fancy, like, canting or whatnot. I mean, typically when you got your laser, you never even come into your cheek to look down right. the sight. You're just playing you, laser tag. You got it. Put yeah. it on what you want to be dead, yeah. essentially, and pull the trigger. Headshots, headshots, headshots. Just you get a headshot, you oh, get a headshot, you get a headshot. Conveniently placed uh, electronic board. A lot of people don't consider that what? they're at threat 100% yeah. of the time. You live in a war torn country, man. Don't leave your electrical boxes on the outside of your homes. <laughs> Wait a minute. All these hostages look the same. They do. Are they cloning? Is that well, the secret to Cold War? They're all in the same. Family. It wasn't a nuclear race, it was a race uh, for cloning technology. Ooh, now I'm really interested. There's Now that there's a sci fi element, he's so smooth. Who is this soldier of mystery? The lights are a little unnecessary. <laughs> and if you consider, unless you have like an auto focuser on your nods, when you're using a secondary and looking iron sights, you won't be able to see those things. Yeah. Your depth perception under night vision is mm -hmm. you can see far, but anything up to like five or six feet of you is just a complete blur. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'd have technology like red dot RMRs on our, our pistols to where you can use them and look through your nods and see the dot through your night vision, but shooting iron sights is more of an index shooting, which you just point your, your thumbs where you want the bullets to go and you use those as reference. You can't actually physically aim under nods. expert. I'm just so impressed. <laughs> He's just so smooth. He's so dreamy. He's so dreamy. Who is this mystery man? Rick the Viking. Rick the Viking. Way to go, Rick. Oh, oh. Nods up. Oh, they got him now. Yeah. Parkour. Parkour, parkour. That's the wrong game LG episode. So. <laughs> How did he get in? Where's that gameplay footage? He's like, you dude, I didn't do it. I swear to God, they're not mine. I'm really a good guy. Don't look at my laptop. Don't look at my search history. Is that a pipe bomb? Uh, no, it's it's plans for a, a gas, like a chemical factory, and they're looking for it. Oh my god. I played this game. A little bit of chopper fire coming in from outside. Is this an inside agent then? You think he's betrayed you, but he's actually really trying to get to the bottom of the whole chemical factory kind of thing. Okay. Holy Ooh. Jesus Christ. And this is what shocks me, that Price has been alive this long. How many explosions, how many gunshots, how many knife wounds? Yeah. His VA disability is at like 200%. <laughs> that was awesome. That was great. I'm gonna need some therapy after that. I need to talk to somebody, let him know what I just saw. Yeah, so brutal. I love the graphics and the realism of it and the methodical uh, tactics that these guys use. It was awesome. Yeah, thumbs up. If you want to see more stuff like this, be sure to follow Gameology on Facebook and YouTube. So you can see our beautiful faces more often. I mean, come on. Why wouldn't you? Think about it. We're getting more fun. Is it more fun? More fun. Language? I think it's more funner. More fun. We're Certainly. doing very well, you guys. Yeah. I don't know oh, if you yeah. noticed. Yeah. <laughs> you think you're going to get better hand gestures in the freeze frame, aren't you? That's I think really so. Good. You That's think... a good one. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see, Gameology.